Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 64 on this April 7th, 2015. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here for WrestlingMayhemShow.com. With me on the horn, as usual, my compatriot in the wrestling industry down in San Antonio, Texas, it's Eamon Payton, Eamon to please, of the Inspire Pro Wrestling. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic this week, Sorg. Uh, it's happy to be back on talking about indie wrestling, as always, as we've done for the last uh, 64 weeks. So it's been That's nice. That's right. 64 times in a row. Um, anyways, uh, and of course, me, I'm here in Pittsburgh, PA, doing work, of course, with IWC International Wrestling Cartel. Great show coming up uh, this weekend in Meadville. We'll talk about that a little bit later in RWA and all kinds of other wrestling projects. We have these wrestling projects coming out of the woodwork, sir. I love it. Uh, but of course, you can communicate with us with your uh, typey fingers in your uh, in your phone pieces. Four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline. Uh, we were using that over here at Wrestling Mayhem Show before this. And good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Let us know about any indie wrestling questions if you're hearing about the guests coming up. Anything like that and of course you can drop us a line at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or you can find subscription buttons to find audio video versions of the show find us on facebook twitter or itunes um all over the place uh follow the conversation make sure you don't miss an episode of this and all kinds of great stuff that we're doing here on the wrestling mayhem show network um and of course you can join us here every tuesday night at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com drop into the chat we're not using the youtube stream comments if you found us over there sorry we're just keeping it centralized on our, on our own website here um um, and, and but come to our chat room, and maybe you can maybe we can see what you have to say exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. We just make fun of your comments after the fact if it's anywhere else, as we just <laughs> did the last show. Um, but anyways, so Eamon, you got somebody from your neck of the woods this week. A return to the show. This Ret- from from is from the neck of the woods. Uh, the neck of the woods being St. Louis, I guess. But, but he's been to my neck of the woods. Geography, I. <laughs> But but as you said, uh, returning returning guest to the Indie Mayhem show. He's also appeared on uh, on uh, Boss Battle as well, and then some other right. Sorgatron Media ventures. Uh, and we're happy to have him back on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, one Evan Jalistico. Evan, how are you this evening? I am good. I had some nice Mexican. I'm watching Backstrom uh, as we were discussing a minute ago. Yes. Um, I caught my cat from getting in my check mix. I'm doing great. I'm I'm ten for ten right now. Awesome. <laughs> pleasure to pleasure to have you back on as well. Uh, I wanted to have you on particular uh, to, to talk about uh, a certain event that's coming, uh, uh, not this coming weekend, but next weekend. Uh, a big two-day event for uh, a company that you're uh, a big part of, obviously, uh, uh, being around the St. Louis area, uh, and that is St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, uh, you mm-hmm. have a big uh, uh, double shot weekend this weekend. Uh, I know you're crowning some uh, new tag team champions and uh, uh, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, so uh, uh, how excited are you for uh, this upcoming event? Um, I don't think I can express in words or facial expressions how excited I am, um, especially with the new format of all St. Louis Anarchy shows going forward being double shots. Mm-hmm. So instead of running the other month and doing six shows a year, we're going to run four times a year and have eight shows. So essentially you get two more shows, but it's kind of a lot less work. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not, um, but I'm very excited. <laughs> We're going to have St. Louis Anarchy champions, uh, tag team champions. Gary is the St. Louis Anarchy champion. Um, so it'll be the first time we ever have St. Louis Anarchy tag team champions. And uh, the field of eight is pretty strong. And actually, um, a team just got added today uh, due to an unfortunate personal situation with Dan Walsh. And um, I wish him the best in speedy recovery. I saw him Saturday at Metro, and he seems to be doing a lot better. But um, right now, the next team is uh, Texas Anarchy, which is Ricky Starks and Steve O'Reno. Definitely two, uh, two other uh, former uh, friends of the Indy Mayhem show. So uh, definitely be an exciting one. Uh, so and going to like, like you mentioned, how uh, the announcement was made here, uh, earlier in the year that St. Louis Anarchy would be doing double shots uh, uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, was that a lot of the, the strategy going into it based off of the um, – the, um, the ease of getting to do like two events in one weekend and, and spacing them out like that. Yeah. So, and I'm sure, you know, I, I think 
there, there's a lot of buzz usually that comes for an indie event. I've seen that whenever an uh, indie company does like a double shot or something like that, that it, you know, it, it kind of attracts people for a, for a full weekend as well. So. Well, yeah, it's um, a lot of people generally like to come out the first night to see if it's kind of worth it to come out the second night. Mm -hmm. In general, I believe St. Louis Anarchy is worth both nights. Um, it's worth a full weekend to me, quite frankly. Um, last year, we had one of our most uh, adventurous years, I guess you say, mm -hmm. bringing in a lot of different names. And I think this year, um, Pierre is more focused on uh, cultivating local talent and using people in the surrounding area. Uh, I say that, and of course, the main event of night two is uh, Gary J versus uh, Davey Richards. And if Gary J beats JoJo Bravo, um, then it's for the title. But uh, yeah. if he doesn't and JoJo wins the title, uh, Gary J versus Davey Richards will still happen. Because the last time they wrestled, um, Davey literally knocked Gary out. Uh, it was a scary sight, but in retrospect, it's a funny sight because he hits him with a spinning hook kick, and Gary just goes like, this and then falls back <laughs> and like literally he's just standing straight up and goes Whoa. and um you know as his friend who was terrifying at the moment uh and he didn't remember a lot of the match but you know now he remembers still nothing but we have this and then fall back we have that Small oh, hopefully hopefully there won't be a case on uh, on night two but uh uh definitely i mean th i think you know that's a uh if, if for those that know Gary J, but especially the ones that are familiar with Davey Richards, I think that'll be a, a, a very high, uh, uh, high, highly anticipated uh, contest. And, and as you mentioned as well, um, obviously the tag team title tournament that will be happening. A lot of really good teams in there. Um, as you mentioned, Ricky Sarks and Steve Barino. You also have uh, you know the guys like ACH and Davey Vega teaming up, which uh, which would be really great. The Viking War Party, uh, the Hooligans, uh, guys like that who are really, I think, uh, traveling the country, and you mentioned uh, Pierre Abernathy, you know, sort of focusing a lot on, on the local talent, which I think in the Midwest in particular, the, would you say there's been a lot of really great talent that's been uh, emerging from that area? Oh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, there were a lot of names we couldn't put on this. Um, I like Carrie Offal and Nick Iggy, Team IOU. Mm. Unfortunately, I believe Nick Iggy is hurt, or well, is it Carrie Offal? One of them is hurt, if I remember correctly, and... Um, we couldn't have added them even if we wanted to. Um, and uh, a lot of us talking about a lot of different teams. But uh, thankfully, we got uh, Trick Davis, mm. um, who's been around for uh, forever and a day. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming down. That's nice. And a lot of just kind of here to there to just kind of pull. John Gresham's coming back up from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I don't know if he lives in Atlanta. I think he lives in Georgia, but I'm not sure. I'm going to say that because hot Atlanta, baby. Uh, <laughs> So a lot of kind of Midwest staples and then Gresham coming up. So definitely. And yeah, definitely. And it seems like that, that Midwest sort of section has a, a lot of, a lot of good wrestling. I think St. Louis Anarchy especially is one of the, um, one of the top groups out there uh, currently. Yeah. And like, what's also nice is it, at, while not wrestling, um, smart mark video is actually sending people out to help record mm -hmm. because Anybody who follows St. Louis Anarchy knows the one thing that uh, always seems to go astray is DVD releases. And uh, currently, Adam Lash has half of a year of 2013 that he isn't sending back. And uh, Pierre got in touch with some gentleman named Tyler something, and he's got uh, 2012, the I believe 2011 and 2012, um, wherever he lives, and he's not sending that back. And uh, so that's three years of great St. Louis Anarchy shows that are just, at this point, just gone. So, so they're just like sitting on this or just not letting you have them? Yeah. No, they're just sitting on it. Um, wow. I've contacted Adam Lash. Pierre's contacted Adam Lash. And the last we heard from all of these guys, Tyler and um, Adam Lash, is that they were sending them back. Um, if I remember right, the last time it happened, uh, like a couple months, a month or two ago, um, Adam Lash asked for money because he did, I think, uh, one show. Like he, it, it's half done, and he wanted money um, for being like a year and a half late. And I emailed <laughs> him and heard back from. Him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, at this point, like, I would, I, I don't want to pay him, but if it got us footage, I would send him some money. It's yeah. like three years of anarchy footage is all gone. Yeah. Um, actually. 
now that I say that aloud. I think Kelly Kyle has some of it. I just need to get back down to Texas because it's on his laptop. Right, right. Um, or I need to send him a like a, 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 just a drive or something. Not like a drive, like a like an external hard drive, I guess, to get it off of him. But I like to go down and visit Kelly because I love Texas and I love wrestling in there, <laughs> even though I haven't been there in over a year because I've just been very busy. Understandable, but it's good to see that uh, uh, Smart Merc will be sort of uh, uh, helping you guys out there. Uh, good, and yeah. As far as, as far as like independent wrestling production, they seem to be the top. You know, Smart Mark is great. It's a lot of really good guys. Um, a guy who doesn't get enough credit, I think, is uh, Mike Robles, who who will be coming to film. And uh, I just have a blast every time we get to hang out, and it'll be nice to be able to hang out for two days with him. Awesome. Definitely. Um, so uh, for those that want to actually attend the event, it will be in uh, Alton, Illinois, uh, at the uh, Knights of Columbus on the 17th and the 9th, or 17th and the 18th. Um, yeah. They actually uh, changed to the Spalding Club. I have no idea why, but Knights of Col- if you look up Knights of Columbus, it won't show up. It's Spalding Club now in Alton, Illinois. It's really oh, weird. okay. So, so uh, for those that are around the Illinois area, that's uh, – Definitely event to check out, and especially you know such a big event for St. Louis Anarchy. So uh, uh, just also to promote, I believe it's SLA uh, SLAWrestling.com where you can uh, get more information on uh, all that uh, and, and tickets and, and all more all that stuff. Um, so so since we since we last had you on, Evan, uh, we also um, there's been a lot of stuff happening with your career, uh, both yourself personally and also uh, uh, the band of. Uh, uh, men uh, known as the Submission Squad, who we've had on in the past uh, on uh, on separate occasions. Uh, I believe from the last time we talked, uh, it may have been a little bit after that. Uh, uh, a company that you guys worked for called uh, Metroplex Wrestling, or not Metroplex, Metro Pro Wrestling, um, had a uh, uh, had a bit of a shutdown. But I know recently back, and and you and uh, Pierre Abernathy as part of the commission uh, were definitely a big force there. And I know they're getting back to doing shows. Uh, 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 what's it been like for work, uh, working for them? It's a blast. Chris Scott is amazing. And uh, Rob Schamberg, actually, um, a lot of people know for, as like the WWE artist. And um, I actually originally met him there, too. Um, and he's a great guy. And Chris is a great guy. And Strider's great. Uh, Wyatt and Sterling are great. Um, and just overall, I really like Metro. Like, So this is my last year wrestling. I say that. But, like, I would probably still do, like, the local things like St. Louis Anarchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metro Pro is something I would definitely still consider doing um, even after retirement and wrestling. <laughs> if that's thing. Um, because it's four hours away. I have actually a lot of friends who live in Kansas. And so if I could just make a weekend of it, like, hang out with them Friday, wrestle Saturday, hang out Sunday, that would be uh, fine by me. Um so it's a really good thing. They have a lot of shows on YouTube I recommend looking up. Uh, I'm in a little bit of them. I actually just shared one of my favorite Metro matches because um, Gary, of course, is in the commission because mm-hmm. it's not uh, the submission commission without me, Pierre, and Gary. <laughs> you wrestle uh, – it's me, Pierre, Gary, and we wrestle uh, Fitchit, Vega, and their sensei. And I won't surprise who their sense or it won't spoil who their sensei is uh, because fans of the Midwest Wrestling or IWA Mid-South – will know who he is and it's kind of a fun little get definitely so uh, go definitely go check that out uh, and then, like you mentioned they have a lot of great uh, stuff on youtube but the production level is also uh really top notch so and it's good to see that they're you know back in action um so definitely go check yeah. out metro pro, metro pro um another company that uh, you and and pierre and gary uh, uh kind of had a good run in and, and kind of took over in a sense was a uh, Florida impact pro uh, or full impact pro out of Florida. Yeah. Um, I, you know, a, a very notorious a promotion uh, uh, back when it was linked with uh, ring of honor wrestling. And now it's part of uh, uh, WWN live and, and, and the stuff they do there. Uh, what's it been like going down to Florida and, and, and working uh, uh, with that organization? Uh, long, long drives. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I'm sure <laughs> it's longer than Texas by like an hour or two. Um, but yeah, at this point, we're used to it. Like we wrestled in California and drove like 32 hours because we had a snowstorm in St. Louis. Um, FIP is great. Uh, they have a lot of really good talent. Um, I'm not thrilled that I got put through a table last time, and I'll be back. Um, unfortunately, their next two shows are April 17th and 18th. Otherwise, yeah. 
myself, Gary, and Pierre would look for revenge against uh, Los Pendejos, uh, the full impact Puerto Ricans, actually, is what they called as a trio, um, which is actually really good. Um, it's got a lot of great talent, a lot of really good guys there. Uh, the WWN family is really awesome. Uh, I got to meet uh, Drew McIntyre. Um, mm. What uh, what does he call himself? I believe uh, Drew Galloway. Uh, yeah. Uh, hell of a nice guy. Uh, so is Mason Ryan. Um, and Mason Ryan is a monster. Uh, like <laughs> you see him on TV, and then it doesn't really resonate how freaking gigantic he is until you meet him in person. Mm-hmm. Michael Tarver is awesome. Uh, I talked to NBC sitcoms with him for like. 20 minutes like <laughs> yes, right um so fip is a great thing and the uh being a part of the wwn network uh family uh makes it really accessible which i like because i'm always able to um watch the shows after they happen so my cat's making noise so i have to cheek a pillow at him and um uh, right um okay, yeah, but- yeah he, he's trying to bogart this interview the little jerk uh <laughs> between uh, Shred and Sal, um, they make a really great atmosphere and they have really cool events. Uh, it just is really cool. It's it's almost like um, the Mohawk at uh, ACW. Like it's just a really cool atmosphere that I really like. Mm. Uh, and it's nice that every now and then I get to see old friends who live in Florida, um, like Daphne. And that's cool. Awesome, so definitely. It's all work. Def- exactly, uh, and, and it's really cool to see. So uh, definitely go check out uh, FIP, and, and they have their stuff on iPay-Per-View and, and all that stuff as well. So um, the uh, this show because the um, they do they do a mini trios tournament, and, which I believe you guys won, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not not giving away spoilers, but all in it, uh, <laughs> we get to the finals. Um, so who knows? Maybe we do. Possibly. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Um, the the other thing I wanted to bring up to you, because uh, uh, we didn't get to uh, – it hadn't happened uh, from the last time we talked to you. Uh, the only squad member I got to talk about this with was uh, Davey Vega. Um, one of the big things that happened uh, in 2014 for the squad, I know, was uh, uh, your big match on night three at uh, King of Trios uh, yes. against the Gentleman's Club. Uh, many many people saying it stole the whole weekend and and definitely a bit of a redemption for you guys following uh, your performance at King of Trios 2009 and and the reception that that happened from that. Uh, what was it What was it like for you to wrestle on that night? Pretty freaking great. Like they had the King of Trios, but we were the Emperor of Amicos, and that <laughs> was um, tremendous. Um, although I was a little weary. Um, weary, leery, uh, once uh, Chuck Taylor came out because Gentlemen's Club is quite a formidable organization in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if anybody can rival the submission squad, it's the Gentlemen's Club. Um, it felt really good. Um, and if our story in Chikara is over and we're never seen there again, um, I'm really happy with the way we went out. Um, hopefully, we're back. I mean, don't, don't like, oh my. I'm not trying to be negative, um, but, you know, stories end, and if that's the end of ours, I'm really happy with it. Um, although, who, you never know. They come around the Midwest from time to time, so. Very maybe. true. But uh, it was a great time, great match, and uh, I got a lot of compliments on my hair, which I always appreciate. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, who, and going back and watching it, who knew Davey Vega could stop time? Who knew that? Apparently, apparently. Uh, uh. Secret of Davey Vega. You would think you would use that a bit more often in, in professional wrestling. Was, right. At least you bust that out. Um, but like no. Kamara gives people that extra little special ability that they didn't know they had. And that, <laughs> like, he can only probably do that in Chikara, I would say, as I make the camera shaky because I'm, I'm doing this on my phone. No problem. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and people can pick up uh, King of Trinos Night 3 to uh, go check that out. So definitely, definitely go watch it. Um, really fun stuff. Uh, we have a new question that we sort of uh, have made sort of a regular question uh, on our show that we haven't gotten the chance to ask people, and that's um, uh, what are you watching in wrestling? Is there anything particular that you are into that you are 
that you're following either for like just studying purposes or recreation or, or any of that. Uh, is there anything in particular that uh, you've been watching lately? Um, I watch WWE. Uh, I watch NXT. Um, I, I wish I could say like the, the reason I, I, I can, I watch, I still watch WWE is for moments like, uh, or shows like WrestleMania mm -hmm. where um, the saying is when wrestling is good, it's great. And like, And then it's me starting to go back into retread water where it um, has a lot of really good moments and it seems to always connect. And it's just, I, I, they don't need me singing their praises. Um, I watch Chikara. Uh, I watch generally whatever I can get my hands on. Um, I recently just found out New Japan had a TV show that I need to figure it out. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, uh, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet other than like uh, small clips and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, definitely. And, and I think for the most part, like uh, this period in, in wrestling, it's become a time where there's so much out there now that, th that everything is, you know, and there's something, seemingly something for everyone. Yeah. Like I, I just started watching Lucha Underground um, because I have, 18 episodes. I just watched the, uh, was it Guerrilla Warfare or Aztec Warfare? Yeah. The title, that hour long battle royal while I was working out in my um, workout room, which is just a treadmill. I, I like to say workout room because it makes it seem more important. <laughs> uh, and I caught up on season two of Korra. Um, and so then I was like, okay, well, now I need to start going through my other DVR. And that had the most videos. So I'm just going through that. And that's really good. Um, so really, I'm just kind of watching what I, I watch Ring of Honor uh, for my little brother, ACH, and <laughs> they have good stuff going on there. Uh, like, really, it's a golden time to be a wrestling fan, because if there's something you don't like, don't watch it, because you have so many different alternatives. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I actually, it's easier to say what I don't watch. What I don't watch is TNA. Um, <laughs> That's usually a good bet around this. Uh, around these right? Parts. I'm like... I'd like to. Damon, I'm oh, losing you. You're back. Sorry, Sorry. I thought okay. I thought you uh, thought I cut off for a second, but yeah. Um, but uh, and going into um, uh, sort of the fact that since you had mentioned you are kind of a uh, uh, winding down in a sense in in, in your wrestling uh, career, um, what's been your biggest takeaway from from working the independence and and traveling as you got as you traveled and and. Uh, the the stuff you've seen and and the the people you've wrestled and and all that stuff. What what's some of your biggest takeaways from uh, independent wrestling? Um, I, I think it was Scott Hall that said you can either have friends or have money or make money. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's not about the money; it's about the friends and doing things for your friends. And um, that's what it is. Like wrestling. All right, don't get me wrong. Wrestling is a business. First yeah. and foremost, you have to get paid so that you can put money, get ass in your car to go back and forth to the shows. But um, outside of that, like, it really is, there is, like, a nice brotherhood to it. Um, and like anything else, there are people who kind of shit on it and abuse it. But, you know, my brotherhood is me, Gary, uh, Pierre, and um, so many more. And... It's awesome, really. Like, I don't know what I'd have in my life if I didn't have Pierre and Gary, Vega, Al, uh, ACH, Fitchett, um, like all my friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like I have outside of wrestling that I play. Um, I'll probably actually go play Smash on Wii U after this or cart or something with some of my non-wrestling friends. Um, or I'll cart with Kennedy, my wrestling friend. Um, but... It's really like the friends you have and the friends you make. The story. It's wrestling is um, it's it's a journey, mm -hmm. and sadly, mine is coming to an end, but also happily. Like I'm I'm not ending out on injury. I'm choosing to move on with my life, and I'll still show up from time to time in San Luis Anarchy or if fun enough, or if it's a good story, you know. Yeah. But, um, Wrestling is 
great. And the friends you make, the families you form are are 100% worth it. Kind Absolutely. Then and, and kind yes. of going like going, kind of going back to what you mentioned about uh, about FIP, about how like it is such a small world that you know the people you get to see and stuff like that. You know, it, I, I, that's something I think a lot of people would say as well is the the friendships that are gained through just the places you go. Yeah, like uh, I, I don't mean to sound disparaging, but like on the indie levels, um, I work a consistent amount. I would say that just about all my weekends are full, or at least I have a booking or something, mm -hmm. but. I don't pay my bills out of wrestling. I pay some of my bills out of wrestling, not all of them, but I make a fair amount of money um, doing what I've been doing, but I've been doing what wrestling for 10 or 11 years. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I see the St. Louis area and um, I see a lot of the veterans who like stick around and it's, it's almost embarrassing and I don't mean that, I mean, I guess it comes out as a negative way, but like people who should stop, but won't or don't want to because they have like this, this fantasy that in their head, they're still, you know, it's still the territory days and they're still Ric Flair on a weekend or Tully Blanchard, you know, on a Saturday, you know what I mean? Right. And I don't be the, that, what that guy. Um, you know, in 10 or 11 years is a good amount for me. Um, I'll probably, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll be around St. Louis Anarchy because it's 30 minutes from my home. Um, it's something that I helped build. Um, outside that, you know, like, I don't want people to look at me and be like, oh, there's there's that asshole. I mean, mm -hmm. fuck, right? You know, well, I mean, at some point, they, they have, they're right. Like, at some point, I shouldn't take a slot on the roster. I should buy a ticket or just watch the show. And kind of like you said, I mean, going out on your own terms and, and the fact that it's, you know, that, that yeah. it's a choice and, and, and that it's just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what you feel to be the right yeah. decision. Yeah. I almost paralyzed myself um, in uh, January last year in ACW. Um, and it's better to, to quit while you're ahead than uh, wheel yourself out paralyzed, quite frankly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, thank you so much, Evan, for coming on and, and you know uh, uh, sharing your stories and, and uh, uh, talking with us again. We always love having you on. Um, if, if there's any upcoming events that you're on or, or places on, on the internet that people can find you, uh, 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 where can they check you out? Let me see if I can open keep Google Hangouts open and look at my calendar. Give me one second. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> April. St. Louis Anarchy. Yes. Uh, ah, the uh, the tenth, I will be in Canton, Ohio, for Full Throttle Wrestling. Uh, the eleventh is Broadway. The twenty fifth and twenty sixth, I'm on vacation. The ninth of May, I'll be at um, Broadway and Pro Wrestling. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, PWCS in Granite City, Illinois. Um, so I'll be local those days. Uh, May 22nd, I'll be at IWA Midwest. And um, I think, you know, a month and a half is good to, you know, nobody's going to remember that much, you know. Definitely. Uh, right? So, like, that sort of thing. Did I lose you? No, okay, cool. No, so, either. Here and there, and, like, I've got other things going on. Like I said, uh, with my last year, I've also decided to take uh, – I've taken less bookings based on – uh, whether or not I think they're fun or worth my time, mm. because otherwise I'll hang out with my friends. You know, I'll I'll board game. I'm I'm a boring person, so you won't hear like stories. I'm like I got out and got drunk. Uh, no, my friends and I'll go play board games or card games, or uh, I'll build Legos because I'm a nerd uh, or a geek, if you will. I'm a geek, um, or I'll play Smash or cards or that new Splatoon game that's not out yet, but I'm excited for when it comes out. Uh, so many things. I still haven't played South Park Stick of Truth. I need to get that. It's on Steam right now. So, uh, anyway, so, like, you know, um, I, I don't want to sound like I said, I'm always full, and then I gave you, like, five out of eight weekends that <laughs> are full. Hot. So, 
it's of my own choice. Uh, I'm, I'm choosing whether or not I want to wrestle places. And if I don't want to wrestle and some promoter here is just like, well, I tried to book him, that cocksucker. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not a personal thing. It's a, well, I mean, it is my personal thing. Never mind. Fuck you. <laughs> Definitely. And they, and, and they can also uh, follow you on Twitter, uh, at Pistol underscore Danger. Uh, you also got a bit of a podcast with another friend of the show and uh, my boss at Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, Biss, the uh, the geek cast uh, that people Rascal. can check out if they're into the into the nerdy things of the of the world or the geeky things of the world. Oh yeah, like we've got like uh, I think seven episodes or this or tomorrow is this I can't remember right now. And I, last week, um, uh, Biss fell asleep. I said it was technical difficulties. But uh, a little known secret, and uh, don't tell anybody this, or uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Biss actually just fell asleep on the couch <laughs> and recorded on Friday, and I went on like this huge uh, Nintendo uh, joygasm because I'm an admitted Nintendo fanboy. I like Nintendo and I like Marvel, and uh, I actually just bought one of those little Loki figurines for the Disney Infinity set. Mm. Those things, are damn cool, and I own a couple Amiibos. Um, I want more, but I, I won't. I won't lose myself in them, you know? I have Mario Luigi, I have the Mario Brothers, uh, and I have Mega Man, which I found at a Walmart, but he's super hard to what find. A, what, a, what about the wool Yoshi they just announced? Oh my god, those things are so... I, I might get the light blue one. <laughs> <laughs> this so is why I'm, go, I'm, I, I am a big Nintendo fan, and I'm so glad I haven't bought a Wii and gotten into all this stuff yet. <laughs> like, I love my Wii U, Mostly because, um, and I don't talk her about her a lot, so bear with me. Uh, my girlfriend loves to just kind of dick around, and so like I'll just like she'll be like I want to watch Grey's Anatomy, and she'll TiVo, and I'm like, ugh, I hate that show. Gary actually likes that show, um, so I'm like, whatever. So I just grab my game pad and I just play Hyrule Warriors, or um, started getting back into Kart again because when I got my Wii U, Smash just came out, but I got Mario Kart right away, and I never really got too much time into Mario Kart because I immediately went right to Smash. Um, and I won our local friend's uh, tournament, and I got a sweet belt for it, which is nice. And um, you can find it on my Twitter somewhere, I think. It's a sweet belt. Uh, Trevin from FIP actually gave it to me, and I was going to award it to the winner, but then I won. So I got the belt and, like, an adorable little Kirby plush, uh, a little fighter Kirby where he's got, like, the Ryu headband. And... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I was the winner. I won with Ganondorf, of all people, because um, the final fight between the top four was pick anybody you want, and everybody picked all their favorites, and um, it was done like in a lot of different um, ways. Like, So I'd watch them play all their favorites, and I knew how they moved, and I saw how they fought, and like I had like six rounds to kind of study them at their best, and so, they, like, my favorite character to play is this Little Mac because that super B punch, is, it's, it's, it's like money in the bank, right? You hit that, game over. Um, so he's who I played as through the whole thing. And then the last thing, I switched to Ganon because they had also seen me play as Little Mac for six rounds. So now they had to adapt to something new, and I was able to win. Done. Well, this uh, has been your uh, mini boss battle from insertcointobegin.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But awesome, awesome. I actually played a game that, I, this is going to sound weird, but I thought was like, I thought was inspired by here. I think it was called, I think it was just called Boss Battle. I was like, wait a minute. I on that <laughs> <laughs> but it was this uh, cute little card game where you, um, you laid down a dungeon and at the end was the boss. And you had to kill the uh, travelers before they could get to the boss. And it was really adorable. Oh, no. uh, I'd play it again if I remembered what it was. <laughs> so, yeah. Clearly, clearly, clearly stealing on Sorgatron Media is Thunder. I mean, come on. Right? I, I almost slapped him with an infringement right there. Uh, <laughs> but then I realized I don't know anything about the law other than to call my friend Lindsay to take care of all my tickets. That's, that's as far as I go. No worries. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we. I don't know if Sorg owns the phrase "boss battle," but we'll have to. We'll we'll look into that. No, um, no, no, uh, no. But, what, but once again, thank you. Thank you so much, Evan, for coming on and and and, yeah. and talking with us again. Um, and I believe it's time for me and Sorg to go dive into some of the stuff happening in the world of independent wrestling. 
That's right, Eamon. And, and I believe, if I'm mistaken, we're still somewhat rolling Ring of Honor in on this show, on the Indie Mayhem show. And you, We always debate. And, and... I, you know, I, I think it's more because we're the ones that watch it amongst the crew. So <laughs> we don't mix it in. I mean, as is, I mean, you saw the little sliver of coverage we're giving Impact Wrestling these days, right? Um, That's true. So, so at least it's getting more than that. But you attended a big show in San Antonio for... Uh, and you got to experience some of the guys that we get to up here. I love that all of our, our great talent from up here in the, in the Northeast is heading your way. It was really nice. Uh, it, it was a pleasure. I, I believe seeing uh, Dalton Castle's match advertised for the show is what convinced me to be like, yeah, I'll check this out. And I was very happy. Um, uh, Dalton Castle is phenomenal. And I'm, mm-hmm. uh, He's definitely deserving of the Ring of Honor contract he now has. Uh, so uh, good to see him uh, uh, finally get finally get to see him wrestle live. But no, it was a um, it was a four show TV taping, nice. which, in all honesty, I was kind of worried about that going in just because I didn't know how long it was going to be. I didn't know, you know, I never been to like a, a that style of TV taping before for any show. I think, um, and it actually was probably my favorite Ring of Honor show. Just from the fact of it, it was spaced out very nice. Like I, I, I think a lot of times in indie wrestling, some of the problems that they the a lot of shows have sometimes is that they kind of have a tendency to burn out crowds, even yes. the really good ones. Yes. Uh, just because you know you just pile match after match after match on people, um, but it was spaced out nicely. They had some talking segments, which was really cool um, to to really like sort of calm people down in a sense. Uh, and, and they spaced out the ma- the main event quality matches throughout the show, obviously. And I think that helped a lot. Because I, I feel like in a regular re- Ring of Honor wrestling show, they would have put all those matches like right next to each other and the crowd would just be dead by the main event. Um, and they, they spaced them out and it was much better. Everyone seemed into it throughout, which was cool. Um, Obviously, I won't spoil stuff because that would be wrong of me uh, uh, before the shows come out. But there was some cool storyline stuff happening uh, uh, from the shows. A couple surprise appearances, which was nice to see. Uh, a couple of local talents got to uh, to get a shot, uh, including uh, Inspire Pro Champion Jody Andy Dalton uh, was in a match uh, that you should check out. Uh, didn't last all too long against uh, uh, Ray Death Row, but still very good. Uh, uh, getting the opportunity. Um, and yeah, it was a, a fun show. Uh, I, I, like I said, I've never been to like a, uh, produce, um, multiple TV taping show like that. Like I've never been to like TNA when they've done it or, right. or any of that. Um, so that's cool. To, it was cool to see and it was cool to be a part of, uh, and the match quality for these next few weeks of ring of honor should be really cool. So if you haven't been checking them out, uh, I encourage you to, because it, it was really good stuff all around. You know, it, it, and they've really changed since they first started, since the first time I saw them uh, here doing a TV taping, the infamous six-show TV taping in the Ross River <laughs> Ice Gardens where everybody was freezing, which apparently led to Steve Carino going to the hospital, or not going to the hospital, actually, but he should have, um, because the guardwell was basically frozen that he fell on, ta- on top of. Um, you know, but but since then, you know, and I've, we saw, like, the West Virginia one, and you know, I said the match quality in general, it felt like they were holding back a little bit when they were booking their TV and leaving all the good stuff for the, you know, the, the main shows, you know, the mm-hmm. ones that are going to sell or pay-per-view or, or whatever the case may be. But there really are just going full tilt with a lot of these matches. And it's really, really cool to see, you know, having like half of an episode is a match that you only really have two matches, the entire thing. And, you know, especially, mm-hmm. you know, that one I saw with the AJ in, uh, in, uh, uh, have been born, uh, uh, you know, Seidel, yeah. thank you. He, I'm going to see him this weekend. I should, I should remember what his name is by now. Um, but, uh, but it was just mind blowing that that was a TV match, you know, um, mm-hmm. and it should have been on any pay per view, to be honest. And uh, you know, it, it, it's really cool. And I think people are really taking notice of that now. And, and this is Ring of Honor, you know, kind of finding its place and finding that voice in this format of of, of their TV tapings uh, versus their pay per views. So it's completely still watchable if you don't get any pay per views now. Definitely, yeah. So, and it was cool just to see like the production level like went up a bit because obviously in San Antonio it would be a bit hard. From they got a Titantron the, now, right? They they do they had the they busted out the Titantron. They busted out the um, 
uh, you would know the, the proper term for it, but the camera that's on like a, a, the, like jib a swivel crane. Or the jib crane camera. Yeah, the, the camera that almost knocked me out a couple times. I was very terrified. Um, but uh, no, it was it was cool to see. It, it was cool to see the production that's, of it. And, that's the and, thing. That's the thing that I watch all night at WWE shows. Is just where the jib camera goes. Like I'm just watching it. Yeah, I was like, what are they gonna do with it? Oh, I bet that show's gonna look cool. You know, and, and, <laughs> and the one time I had half decent seats and it like kind of came in over my head when they do that other side of the arena shot coming in. Yeah, you know, I mean that's I, that's what I do when I go to WWE shows. Is I'm watching them. I mean, if I go to Ring of Honor, I'm comparing what they're doing to what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> like I'm very much like okay, they do that. Okay, okay. You know, oh, we could do lights like that. Not the not expensive ones like that, but we could find a way to do that. You know, <laughs> I mean, there, there's uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of that. You know, kind of going on. <laughs> we actually do that when we go to other indies. We're like, we're going to look at a VOW. Like, we could get lights like that. That would be really helpful at that one venue. You know, um, you know, things like that. But I mean, I think that's what you do is you have to look at other promotions. I imagine you're doing the same thing. I mean, you listen to other commentators and getting your uh ideas mm-hmm. off of that as well and and kind of comparing notes right so definitely yeah uh, but yeah it was just fun to see but yeah. to, to, to be a part of like that production was was really cool to just watch and 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 take a look at so awesome awesome so yeah i'm sad we don't have one come around here anytime soon from the looks of it because usually you have yours right after us so yeah usually that's usually how it goes uh, but yeah, and it seems like they're going to the south a bit more too, which is kind of cool. Good. I know they're going to Amarillo uh, upcoming, so. Good, good, good. And that's probably why we're not seeing so much because they are going a lot of different places, and maybe it's just that that TV market's expanding out for them. Possibly, yeah. So cool. Um, well, I, I guess uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up this weekend. Uh, Pittsburgh alone, the area we have three shows. Two of them, like in the greater Pittsburgh area. Um, of course, first I'll hit up, uh, PWX is having a show called Futures. Uh, this looks like their, uh, mini tournament, the Crown New Futures Cup Championship. I think those are kind of their young prospect, uh, because these are people that I usually don't see pop up with PWX, and they, they run out, you know, just outside of town in McKeesport. They got a cool little venue down there. It's their own WrestlePlex, like, they own the building, and they can do all the stuff with it, and their TV's, uh, uh, doing pretty decent right now. Uh, so, and, and a lot of friends of the show pop up on this, but like I said, kind of a, a, a kind of a young prospects cup actually there's a few of these on joey vengeance i know i've seen before and i can't remember this guy's name in the corner but i know he's been at uh proving ground show at least maybe another show for iwc and uh was pretty impressive they're talking about a top left corner yeah, of is the that poster sing joshua a- sing i believe from aiw yeah he's one of uh johnny gargano's students I yeah yeah he was team with somebody and they had a pretty good match when they were in iwc for a minute so um I, definitely somebody to look out for if, if you're heading up for that um, other show going on, Vicious Outcast Wrestling is running a show this Friday down in Connellsville, PA. Um, they had a pretty, I, they were, they just came off of a West Virginia show right over the border. Um, and I, it might be the first one that they've done. And, uh, apparently friend of the show, G Raver, uh, took on, was it Matt Tremont? Yes. Fr- other friend of the show, uh, Matt, Tremont show Matt Tremont, yeah. is in a barbed wire match. Holy crap. <laughs> so... Uh, so that happened, and uh, I guess they're going to have some sort of rematch. I don't know if it's going to be also barbed wire. I'm not sure, um, but uh, yeah, it 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 looks pretty rough. It looks pretty rough. Raver always gets into it. I, I know he he talked about he had a match with Sabu recently, and I, and I talked with him about uh, um, you know using barbed wire in that too. He's getting way too used to doing this for his own good. Um, but anyways, go you know, good for him doing some fun stuff out there. And uh, get noticed. So, uh, also this weekend, of course, I will be up at Meadville, PA, uh, a little bit north of here, back in my old stomping grounds, uh, up in the Mercer County. Well, I guess it's Crawford, but um, for Night of the Superstars Four, this is one of those crazy super shows. This is, as I've been telling, the biggest show of the year that I get a chance to work on, um, at least. And, uh, and I love that it's just like up there in the middle of nowhere um mm-hmm. but uh pretty big one for me it, it works with meadville high school the Bo- boosters cup club and everything usually when you see a big show like this rick flair will be there that's not Spardware. there we go but rick <laughs> flair will be there recent hall of famer inductee kevin nash tommy dreamer is going to take on rhino um of course uh dj z zima ion matt seidel Gangrel is going to be a part of this now as well. Um, it's a pretty crazy mix 
Oh, it's a pretty crazy mix of people uh, involved with this. Um, and uh, the Ric Flair, I love the way they're working Ric Flair, and obviously Ric Flair's not going to wrestle, but uh, Ric Flair is uh, actually uh, conducting the uh, Ric Flair Invitational Battle Royal. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, we talked with Justin Plummer last week on this show uh, more extensively about uh, what's going on uh, in Meadville. Uh, Matt Seidel, DJ Zima Ion. A, is really probably your candidate for the show stealer. We were just talking about uh, Dalton Castle. He's going to be in a three-way for number one contendership with Colin Delaney and RJ City. Um, also going to be probably a pretty damn good match. Andrew Powell's facade is scheduled. Um, uh, it, these are a, a lot of fun. La- last, I was just putting together the best of DVD for IWC for 2014, and and uh, from this, AJ Styles and Anthony Nice was on that, which I think was sh- definitely a match of the night. Uh, on a show that had, um, was that the Bret Hart show last year, I think? Um, you know, it was, it was just tr- a tremendous mix of people. Always a lot of fun, and I always get a few good stories out there. And I usually see my friends from uh, Pro Wrestling News and Views. They got a cable access show that apparently does really, really good around the area, and they actually run it like all around the cable here, like everywhere, basically everywhere except in Pittsburgh. They have their stuff on. And last I talked to them, they have a deal, and they run it like alongside the advertising for the pay per views. So they like have some kind of deal with that. And one of the coolest. Uh, kind of studio environments. They had a Royal Rumble pinball machine in there. Really cool. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got to throw a shout-out to them. And I have, I have to check. I don't know if they've gotten their stuff online yet or not. But, um, anyways, uh, that's what's going on in my neck of the woods. I, I, I truly hope that uh, that IWC does find a, a, a appropriate enough Ric Flair Invitational Battle Royal trophy to, to, to match the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. it's going to be a bowling trophy with a robe, most likely. Um, probably. <laughs> I can do that. It, it, it works. I see something with multiple layers for like uh, jet riding on the bottom, mm-hmm. and then I mean, or jet flying, limo riding, and then as it goes up, and yeah. then at the end you just put Ric Flair the person on and just bronze him on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But whatever, it's it's worth it. That's that's, that's that's worth the Andy money that goes into that, right? So, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun um and i think that's yeah i think it's all i had on hand uh we got we got some uh notes from shows coming up but they're gonna be in future weeks so we'll talk about them yeah uh, when they come so um yeah should be a lot of fun awesome definitely uh the the only the only other indie news i know that was big uh was uh uh chicago Pro had a really uh uh what seemed to be a really successful weekend in london or in the in the uk uh in particular the first time over there in the uk um, doing some doing some stuff, I believe, in London, Wales, a um, couple other places. Um, seemed to be some really successful stuff going on over there, and uh, there was also a new Chikara Pro Grand Champion uh, emerging from that weekend. Uh, uh, one of the first ever uh, graduates of the Wrestle Factory, a Hollow Wicked, uh, defeated Icarus and is the uh, new Grand Champion. Um, so uh, uh, great stuff coming from there. Um, uh, Chikar Pro seems to be, you know, I, it's cool, you know, going to a whole different country and and you know, making a success out of it. So, uh, really good to see from them. That's really awesome. Then, uh, Ophidian was in Chile. He wasn't in England. Yeah, Ophidian was not in Chile, which I find is really cool. He's a really good wrestler. I um, I wish him and Amasas got out more. Definitely, definitely. Uh, the, they're guys that kind of. You know, I think they're they're the guys, especially that like got people into that kind of style of wrestling, especially the the stuff that went viral of them and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely fantastic stuff from them. Cool to see you know wrestlers get out and, and you know expanding beyond you know just America too. So that's uh, really cool stuff from them as well. So congratulations to uh, to all that was involved. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of the uh, the big indie stuff I I know of happening uh, this past week. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and as we mentioned every week on the show, you know, if there's an indie wrestling show near you, um, go to it. Then, you know, you may find something you really like. You may find you you may gain a an experience out of it that will you know create some good stories, right. um, good or bad. Right. Um, you know, indie wrestling's you know 
runs the gamut. And let us but, know. And also let us know if you're going to an indie wrestling show. Put put this number four one two two zero six WMS zero in your phone. Give us a quick review. What did you just see? While you're still high off of that indie wrestling, or really low, depending on which one you went to. Um, you know, let us know. We'd love to hear your opinions on what you're here. We you're checking out, or if you want to write something up at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Uh, we would like to hear from you or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, anything like that. So, awesome. Uh, so, hey, Evan, thanks for joining us and stick around for more of the conversation here. Yeah, no worries. I think women's wrestling is going great, JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we have a whole other podcast on that. But, uh, yeah, well, actually, we did uh, We dove, dived a little bit in indie wrestling over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. We had uh, a previous guest from this show, Serafini, on there to talk with us. We wanted a female perspective on AJ Lee retiring from the WWE, and why not get the female wrestler perspective from somebody we know? Uh, so we had her on, and we had a great conversation about that. So please check out Wrestling Mayhem Show from this week. That's uh, 464 is that episode. Um, I think the official name is going to be uh, Kelly Kelly Could Really Go. Um, <laughs> is what seems like we came up with. Um Guys, listen to find out. Uh, but uh, go check that out. Go check out Pistol underscore Danger at Amen 2 please. I'm at Sorgatron live at WrestlingMamShow.com every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern time. You do the math for the rest. I'm, it's too late. Uh, and also, yeah. like I said, contact us all the ways, WrestlingMamShow.com. Subscribe to us on video and audio versions, including iTunes, YouTube, and the such. And um, is that all? Did I plug all the plugs? Yeah, thanks to Basic Sickness. All the plugs. Thanks to BasicSickness.com uh, for the music for this and the Wrestling Mayhem show. And since I forgot to thank him on all the rest of the shows, thanks Mike Allen PR for hanging out on the rest of the shows of the night. Uh, so he gets a rare plug on this one. So Evan, Evan, you had some plugs as well? I did. I wanted to plug Smart Mark Video and St. Louis Anarchy in, in relation. But uh, the Geek Cast, those are my two big plugs. Smart Mark Video, they have a lot of a great indie wrestling on there. Go ahead and uh, mm -hmm. give them some money. Because they deserve it. And uh, the Geek Cast. Myself and Justin Bissonette, we pretty much talk Marvel and DC, and we're going to start branching on to other things. So awesome. Listen to us ramble. Because <laughs> what else are going to do with it? I got a tag to check out, actually. Uh, and Smart Mark also carries, well, Inspire Pro, I believe it still has them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as well as IWC, RWA, uh, Prime cuts prime wrestling stuff on there including the best ofs that i've actually been helping uh joe dabrowski put together uh so, smart marks the best yeah they got everything yeah I, and mike over there's great to uh, but deal with him on email i've been trying to keep talking to coming on the show uh to talk about some stuff we'll see if we can work that out but um oh sure because every fucking wrestler has one of these now <laughs> what's that Oh, uh, the uh, pro wrestling tees, I believe. Uh, oh, pro wrestling before. tees, yeah, we got pro wrestling tees as well. <laughs> WrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Look for Evan. Look for everybody else as well. So, uh, so that so we've given you all the options. So please, somewhere in this upcoming week, do at least one of those things. One of these things. Tell a friend. Support some indie wrestling. Thanks. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com For all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle <laughs>